Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. There's gonna be another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Iron Twin Fortress, right? This new dungeon that is gonna be really essential for us to do every day because it's gonna unlock awakening for us. That's where we're gonna get the soul coins that's gonna give us the soul stones so we can awaken our champions. It's really important to be able to do this. You're going to want to do this and you're gonna to wanna to zoom up as fast as possible to get the highest ranking soul coins so you can get the highest ranking soul stones so you can get the highest ranking awakenings yeah i mean i know i know it's a lot but this is what we're going to need to do it's just a daily thing that you're going to want to participate in whether you want to or not you're going to need to um so how do we go about doing this this is really hard i'm not gonna lie it's like really hard the gear requirements is going to be insanely high especially for stage 14 and 15. in fact i was really trying to build an all epic team um that could get through to stage 15. i could not do it uh, i got hard hard stuck at 14 just couldn't do it and i know there's ways to do it with legendary champions that's not a question but obviously those are harder to get and not everybody has access to all of them thankfully i do have a solution for stage 14 and 15 and i'm going to show you that not today's video but in the one for tomorrow uh but for today i want to show you how i got up to stage 13 using all epic champions right and so this is my approach to it. Now, I do feel like there's a variety of ways you can do this. I don't feel like you necessarily have to utilize these champions. But for me, this was the most effective way to do it. I really appreciate you coming by to watch this video. And if you enjoy it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And of course, if you enjoyed today's music, we have that Soundstripe link down below in the pinned comment description of this video, along with my code, Deadwood Jedi to save yourself 15%. And of course, if you're looking for account work, you can find Find that on my website deadwoodjedi.com so the team i'm utilizing is pretty basic right there's a couple things that we need for this now i have to say the requirements for these stages are very high because the resistance level is extremely high the accuracy level is extremely high so being able to resist the debuffs or to land your own debuffs is going to be very hard and you're going to need to bring in certain things to make this happen on top of this the boss hits stupid hard especially towards the end of the fight so you have to bring some protection along the way as well so this is a team that i brought in and obviously there's going to be multiple options as far as making it work but for me this is what worked best using all epics or rare champions right and so i'm bringing in rear guard sergeant she's a great ally protection champion and that's what i'm utilizing her for you she also does bring some really nice debuffs like decreased defense and decreased attack as well as some healing for her allies you do you have to use rear guard sergeant no i've done this successfully with nazana as well because she gives herself a nice shield helps stay alive there's multiple ways to go about doing this but this is the champion that i was bringing in here if you have one that has increased defense or that has leech or something like that um you know there's plenty of really good champions tyrant would be a really good option um you could use a bunch of bunch of legendary champions would fit this build just nicely but as far as epics go I thought rear guard was a really good choice after rear guard sergeant we have geomancer and geomancers in obviously very very important now this is my hydra build right so i'm going very fast pretty tanky with really good accuracy insanely good for this because all that damage that the boss deals to us is going to be reflected back to him and that's going to just help burn down the boss a lot faster so i really recommend utilizing geomancer if you have the ability to if you don't it becomes a lot harder but you can use max hp champions you can use uh poison champions there's a lot of different ways you could go about doing this but i do feel like geomancer is probably one of the best after that we have Stagnite and Stagnite, I think, is actually super sneaky good for this because you build him with enough accuracy. He's got decreased speed on his A1, which is essential for this boss. You got decreased attack and decreased defense, which are also really vital for this boss as well. Not only to deal damage, but to help not take as much damage. So I found Stagnite to be extremely good for this. And then, of course, I brought in Claude Beast Feeder, uh, brought him out of the vault, and I think he's excellent for this. He gives you a shield for AoE shield. It's not huge but it is significant. It gives you increased speed for your team so you can keep pace with the boss. That is gonna be helpful. 
but more importantly, gives you an increased accuracy buff. And I think that's absolutely essential for this boss. I think increased accuracy buffs are vital. If you have increased resistance champions, I think that can be really useful as well because the requirements are stupid high. I mean, we're talking like bomb level of resistance and accuracy on this boss. So we really have to bring in a lot to the table. Um, last I checked, I think the boss on stage 15 has over 500 resistance and accuracy. And it's really hard to build any champion that can, you know, can can resist and land debuffs on those kind of levels so it's going to be really important to bring in as much buffs that can give you increased accuracy or bring increased resistance as possible i think and claude fits the bill as an epic champion and then we have reliquary tender now reliquary tender is kind of an odd choice as a rare champion but i love reliquary tender and she's super good because she not only will do a full cleanse for your team but she will also give you some healing continuous heal buffs and brings a revive and i found with this with this team i definitely needed a reviver in here there are definitely other options of champions you could use but the ones that come to my mind are going to be legendary champions i wanted to stay away from that at least for this video to show you guys how attainable this can be for you now the stats on these champions are tough right uh, they're high they're definitely tough and i will show you those at the end so make sure to stick around or you can skip there if that's what you want to see but it is going to be pretty tough now stage 13 the boss is going i believe 230 speed but he has a lot of really interesting mechanics here that are difficult right not only does he have these attacks right and they're gonna be landing things like decreased crit rate weaken um decreased attack decreased defense it's a pain in the butt really but he also has uh, some, you know, this Iron Brand thing with Fires of Insanity. Uh, the, the, basically, the debuff can't be blocked. It can't be removed. The only thing it can be done is resisted. And that's going to be hard to do for all of your champions. So I just gave up on that. Didn't even bother. I think we have a couple champions with good resistance. But that's about it. And these things are going to continue to grow over time. And as they grow, they're going to continue to increase the, the twins. It's going to increase Iron Twins' defense and attack on its own. So it's a big pain in the butt kind of thing. Um, but another thing that this has uh, is, let's see, what's that? Oh, yeah. So in that, so that's what he does. Um, he has Runa Swath. It does this. One does attack, one does defense, basically. And he kind of alternates which one does which. But the bigger thing is this Doomsday Machine, right? Um, it hits, each one hits, it does it like once he gets below 40% HP, he does both of those things right attack and defense and it's really a pain in the butt and the big thing is that it becomes a max hp hit so this skill does a lot of damage to your champions and so that's why you can't just stack hp and hope to survive it's really difficult to be able to build quality teams on this the real problem i found though is actually this passive ability where not only does after you know different segments 85 percent 70 percent 55 percent 40 percent he instantly attacks everybody removes all his debuffs those are pains in the butts right but that's like ice school and we can handle that the bigger issue is if you don't have decreased speed on this boss every time you place a buff on your team he gets a 10 percent turn meter boost which is kind of insane so yeah that's that's a lot right yeah it's a lot of turn meter boosts he can get so it's really important to keep decreased speed on this is why i like stagnite so much for this right um obviously affinity is going to matter and affinity changes constantly for this thing so it's going to be a bit of a pain right but the only goal you really have get to stage 15 get to stage 14 or 15 you'll be in okay shape at that point i think um but yeah the decreased speed thing is really really problematic so that's why i'm using stagnite um there's plenty of legendaries that can do this there's actually you know more than a few epics that can do this as well and constructing a team that will work for this is going to be difficult right you need to be able to do that you need to be able to land that um and that's the that's the biggest thing that's the biggest thing to be able to do so i'm gonna put this team in we're gonna go it's just full auto and i don't really have to think about it um and we just try to land the debuffs best we can here is kind of the biggest thing yeah we try to get the decreased speed right off the bat with stagnite we weren't successful it's going to make this a lot harder right uh, but you can see we get the shield from claude we get the ally protection that helps keep everybody alive but obviously who's in trouble here yeah it's rear guard sergeant right once we get decreased attack on the boss it helps a lot with the damage that we're taking at least for the first half of this fight you can see all of a sudden it's a lot less problematic and now that we got the decreased speed on 
they're, the boss is going to be going at a slower speed because he's not going to get those turn meter boots. We're going to be able to keep pace. Now, most of my champions are over 230 speed, which is the speed that the boss is on stage 13, right? And at least I'm pretty sure that's what the speed is. So we want to be a right around there. We can be a little bit lower, a little bit faster, but we want to be right around there so that the boss isn't taking more turns than we are, right? We want to at least keep pace with him. And so that's kind of the goal here with this. And you can see, once we got to that threshold of 85%, he cleansed all those debuffs off of him, which is a problem because all of a sudden, once again, we're vulnerable, right? Uh, we do have Reliquary Tender in there to help cleanse some of those debuffs so that decreased defense hopefully will go away in just a bit. We got that ally protection, which is helping. And there's that cleanse with the healing, and this will help keep us alive. But of course, we hit the 70% and cleanse, you know, stripped all those debuffs that he had and, you know, this is why I brought Reliquary Tender in there, because Rear Guard Sergeant does go down keeping everybody else alive, and being able to keep her alive is vital. Um, so, yeah, there we go, but we're back in business, and the reason why we're able to do so much damage is because Geomancer, right? He's getting that reflecting all that damage, so that's all we have to do. I don't have to build crit rate or damage on any of the other champions. I'm just letting Geomancer do the job for us, um, and it's really effective. Obviously, an Underpriest Brogni would be a great option here, right? I feel like shields are gonna be super helpful in this. Building your champions with defense is gonna be very important as well because staying alive is gonna to be tough. Um, and we're gonna to need to do as much as we can to make that happen. And you know, making sure we have enough defense on everybody is gonna be crucial here. Um, and so there, there we go. Especially with those max HP hits, the only thing that's really gonna mitigate that at all is gonna be our defense or any buffs, like increased defense or strength and buffs, which can be really vital for us as well. Um, and another reason why we don't wanna just max out our HP. But you can see, there we go. We're getting the debuffs on, we're reflecting a lot of the damage, and I think we've just about to hit that 40% threshold. I don't think we've done it quite yet, but you can see that skill right there, boy, is it tough. It does a lot of damage for us. And so it becomes really vital to heal up as much as possible in between. This is why we need Reliquary Tender there for the revive. Keeping that ally protection up is really, really helpful. Um, things like Guardian sets, I think could be really helpful as well, but you know, we're gonna try and make do as best we can. But you can see he's using basically two skills at once as he goes around through here. So he's gonna, hit us in just a minute here and we're healed up again right there's that big hit and there's that second one with that laser pointer it's so annoying but it hits really really hard and so being able to survive that is crucial here this is why i say bringing someone that brings an increased defense brings some strength and buff could be really really helpful but this is stage 13 right pretty much pretty much accomplished at this point right all we need is him to do one more big hit and he'll kill himself and we'll be in good shape. We got the burn back on, cleansed up, everybody's full. Easy breezy, as they say. Not so easy breezy though, because as I try to bring, bring this up to another stage, another level, it becomes incredibly hard and I was not able to do it, right? I wasn't able to keep the kind of stats that we have on and increase them as the boss gets tougher along with keeping the speed up. And that's really the hard part is getting that speed up to that next level because this boss is 230, 14, he's at 240 speed, I believe, and at stage 15, 250 speed. It's very fast for a boss. And with that turn meter boost, every time we're putting buffs on our champions, it'd be very hard to keep pace and stay alive. He's getting turns too quickly. We're not able to heal up and he's killing us too quickly. So it becomes really difficult to kind of scale this up as we go through. I'm sure it's possible if you have the gear for it, but if you're using only epic champions, you probably don't have the gear for it either. Of course, thankfully, you guys don't have to use only epics. You can use all your legendaries, all your best champions to try and beat it at the highest levels. And so I think that this at least gives us a template for how to do that. Bring in some protection, whether that's guardian gear, ally protection, something like that to help us stay alive. We definitely need some kind of healing as well as cleanse because that decreased defense would definitely be a problem for us. On top of that, we want to make sure that we're bringing some kind of damage, whether that's a Geomancer, a Royal Guard, somebody that can do big damage against the boss is going to be really important for us. And then, you know, we still need to go fast. So somebody like Claude was very valuable, giving us increased speed, but you need something like that. You can't run everybody at 270 speed. I'm pretty sure you can't. So that's going to be really problematic. And then, of course, you got to bring decreased speed in as well. So, like, there's so many things that you need to bring in. Decreased attack, did I forget to mention that? There's so many things that you need to bring in. This is going to be very hard for most people. Uh, one could say it's a bit overtuned. 
I like the challenge of it though. I don't think that's bad, but we do need to farm these medallions every day. So having it be, you know, a little bit easier to go about and do would be really nice. Unfortunately, that's just not the case here. So, you know, we're going to have to kind of deal with as we will. Thankfully, I do have an approach for stage 14 and 15, uh, not full auto, but pretty darn close to it. That should be pretty easy for everybody to do regardless of your gear. Um, and so that's really good, assuming you have the champions, and that's always going to be the trick with this. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what we got going on here. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys, um, you know, give you an idea of how the Twin Towers can work for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the champions and their gear. So let's start off with Rearguard Sergeant. You can see I've got her with 50,000 HP, 4,700 defense, 227 speed, just under that 230 threshold that I was looking for here. Obviously, if I wanted to move her up for the higher difficulties, I would try to increase that speed. Um, and then I have 340 accuracy. With that increase accuracy buff that should be enough to land the debuffs at this stage now if we go to the higher stages it's not quite there and it's very inconsistent the resistance definitely isn't enough at 290 so one of the things i could do to try to push this further is obviously increase the speed but also try and increase that accuracy and lower the resistance just accept the fact she's going to take some of those iron token debuff things um, but this is tough. It's a very tough one. And one of the reasons why I chose rear guard is she's a defensive based champion. A lot of defense is good with not a crazy amount of HP because those max HP hits are going to totally decimate her. So I don't need to build her HP up too high enough to absorb the damage from everybody and hopefully survive still that max HP hit. It's a dicey gamble though. There is no real perfect way to go about doing this. I could use stalwart gear on her. That actually might be an excellent approach to this uh, to help mitigate some of that damage. Um, obviously, I've been using a lot of immortal sets. You'll see that throughout here. Um, but there's obviously more than one way to go ahead and you know skin this cat. Uh, so you know these are this is what I use, and I think it works pretty well, and it should give you a good guidance as far as what you're looking to do here to advance on this boss. Then we go to Geomancer, obviously the major damage dealer for this team. Now he's got 250 speed. I have him built for Hydra, right? So 250 speed, 360 accuracy. It's perfect for Hydra, or at least decent for Hydra. Uh, I usually do brutal difficulty, so it works there. But obviously at the higher difficulties, this isn't enough. I really do need to bump that up closer to like 400, 450, even with that increased accuracy buff. And so I'm not quite there yet, but you can see I have solid HP, solid defense, type of things that are going to help keep him alive as we move on to stagnite the secret sauce of this team i have a bolster set on him um which i like you know we don't really need the shield right off the jump but i do like the ink the the healing ability that it gives me um and so i tried that out 230 speed right on the button there 425 actually i definitely need his debuffs to land so honestly him i would actually try to pu push even higher on that accuracy if i were going higher difficulty so i'd try to get that even up to like 600 actually if i could while still maintaining solid defense in hp that's the difficulty with this team especially without having increased defense buff it becomes a lot harder and one of the reasons why i would recommend if you brought in a legendary champion to bring in one that brings in an increased defense buff i think that would be really really helpful um, but otherwise he's fantastic especially with that decreased speed ability and then I absolutely love this champion. I've been wanting to find a way to use them. Claude Beast Feeder. And finally, I have one. So obviously, we're getting the increased speed from Claude, the increased accuracy buff from Claude, as well as a bit of a shield. So I built his HP up for that shield. I built his defense up as well. I need him to survive. That's really the only goal I have here. And then I put resistance on him at 430. It's just not enough. It's just not enough. I don't know that there is a number that is enough, honestly, at the highest levels of this boss. So, you know, there's not much I could do there. This seems Seems like a pretty solid build i could probably take into the next level but uh you know because instantly we get the increased speed and the increased accuracy that'll help everybody land their debuffs on the boss and of course very last we have the rare champion reliquary tender who is one of my favorites i, I just use her all over the place got a nice cleanse ability the revive is very helpful um, and those continuous heals are great obviously high hp good defense speeds 230 kind of right at that threshold obviously if i'm pushing higher i'm probably not going to be using her i'd probably try to bring in somebody else uh probably of a legendary stature that can do the same thing she does cleanse heal and revive those are the things i'm really looking for from this role 
So that's the team that I brought in. Those are the champions that I use. I found it to be very effective, obviously, from stage 13 and below. But as you go higher, you need to get that speed up. You need to get those accuracy up, especially. And that's really hard to do while still maintaining a sense of survivability. I couldn't do it without using any other legendary champions. And so that would be the next step for me, right? To substitute some of these champions and bring in some legendaries that can really fill these roles better than these epics can and so that's that's what i would recommend champions like lord champfort tomb lord uh even somebody like necrit would be really great you know we're looking for brogni we really want a lot of shields we want us uh, we want uh ally protection we need that decreased speed um those are all really important debuffs to be able to bring in Krisk obviously would be a must or a most wanted type of champion for this you can bring in damage dealers like ninja can be really effective as well there's definitely other approaches to this but this was the one i found to work for me now when it comes down to it i get to stage 15 i will probably opt for an auto team that i can use just farm it and auto click it right with you know legendary champions involved but i wanted to show you guys how how viable it is without any legendary champions and i think it is viable just really hard and the gear level's really high um so that's kind of where we're at with this so hopefully you guys found this helpful hopefully you know it kind of made it so that this is going to be a little bit more approachable at least in the initial stages when we're still climbing the ladder and unlocking all these different stages and if you can get to stage 13 i'll have some unkillable teams that you can use for stage 14 and 15 at least if you have man eater there's limits to what i can do guys but that is something that is available there for you that I'm going to be showing or talking about uh, in the next uh, day or two. So stay tuned for that and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Notification bell so you don't miss it. And until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.